Good morning. I would like to thank Klaus for inviting me here again to this most prestigious meeting. Thank you very much also for your continued support. Now, I hope that Richard hasn't taken the 5% of the whole morning, so um, <laughs> there will be seal. <laughs> so, the question is, is hip and instability visible, visible on MRA? And the answer is, yes, you can see it, but the predictive value is not that high. So, I could stop my talk, but I, I've given 12 minutes. So, as Ira has pointed out, the stability of the hip or the the range of stability is quite large. You are going from stable hips to clearly unstable hips, and in the middle you have a transition zone of hips where you don't really know whether they are stable or unstable. And we have been trying for, for a while to find out ways how to define those. For example, the fear index we have been talking on. And we just continued our work. Now, parameters that are usually associated with instability of the hip are a low lateral center edge angle, a high at stubber index, a high neck shaft angle, increased femoral torsion, a positive fear index uh, that is measured like that, nicely pointed out also by Ira Salz before, and the prediction is quite good for if you use the fear index to diagnose instability. There are other parameters that are associated with instability, that's hypertrophy of the librum, not very reliable, the increased size of the ilocapsularis, um, questionable, difficult to determine, and tear of the ligament anteriors have also been associated with um, instability of the hip. Now, clear parameters that Prove instability of the hip is subluxation or migration of the femoral head. Like these two hips, they have a break in chentened lines, so this hip is migrating, moving out. Sometimes a bit less visible, like on this hip, where you have an increased distance from the teardrop. Uh, there on the left side, that the hip moves out also. We know that the stability of the hip depends on the bony geometry. And in the normal hip, the equilibrium is in the center of the acetabulum. In the dysplastic or unstable hips, the equilibrium is near the acetabular rim, which makes the head move out. So you can observe a gap posterior infilling between the femoral head and the posterior part of the acetabulum. This is also the observation we did frequently with MR arthrography where you can see the scatolinium in, in the posterior inferior joint space, which we call the crescent sign. And our hypothesis was that the crescent sign may be an indicator for hip instability. Can you follow me? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so we looked, we did a retrospective study on our patients, um, starting off with 129 PIOs uh, versus 160 hip arthroscopies and we ended up in two groups with 56 uh, hips treated for dysplasia and 70 hips for FII. Uh, mostly exclusion because of insufficient um, MRs because the radial sequences were missing or it just had no MR arthrography. So we looked at different parameters on the AP pelvic view. We looked, measured the lateral center edge angle, at the index, extrusion index, the fear index, we used the hip to norm program from Maurice Tonatz to calculate the anti and posterior coverage. On the MR, we uh, measured the femoral torsion, the asphericity angle, and the presence of the crescent sign. So we, the crescent sign was positive or present when there was gadolinium between the cartilage of the femoral head and posterior joint surface of the acetabulum with continuous gadolinium present from the acetabular rim or from the fossa to the point of measurement measurement, which usually was in the center of this slice, which we took at the center of the femoral head. So you have three examples, an axial, an axial cut, um, there with the gadolinium posterior, that's the point of measurement, then a sagittal point of measurement there, and the radial cuts point of measurement there. So this would be a positive presence of a crescent sign 
in the same hip on all three slices. We did uh, quite extensive uh, statistics, unwrite uh, multivariate regression analysis. I go, uh, don't go into detail. The inter-observer reliability uh, was excellent for all the measurements we did. The groups were age-wise, they were comparable, non-significant. Uh, the gender, we had much more uh, males in the dysplastic groups, interestingly, and about equal or a little bit more males also in the, in the impingement group. If you look at the radiographic analysis, so we have a clear distinction between the impingement group and dysplastic group, so all the measures are really highly statistically significant, different, except for the femoral torsion, which is just uh, which is okay with 0 0.05 um, exactly. Now, if you look at the crescent sign group, so I, I just show per, per slice, so on the axle, you can see that um, 80 82% of the positives are grouped in the displast are dysplastic. And in the 77% of the negative um, crescent signs are impingement patient. And the difference is statistically significant. And this is the same also for this crescent sign on the sagittal and on the radial cuts. So all the times we have it's quite statistically different that the dysplastics have much more positive um, crescent signs and it's quite frequently absent in F FII patients. Statistically, we found a consistent pattern of crescent sign being much more prevalent in patients of the dysplasia group. The this difference is statistically significant, but the predictive power was best in the axle planes, but it was limited, so the sensitivity was 67% and the specificity was 88%, which is not that great for, um, for, for prediction. We did then a multiple regression model and looked at all the variables, crash and sign, on the axle cut, fear, LCE, extrusion index and adsub index, and only the LCE Extrusion index and at the end were significant and predictive. However, there was a confounding between the lateral center edge angle and the extrusion index, so we excluded those values from the extrusion index for the calculations. And what we found then is not surprisingly that the question sign is, was not um, significant, but mostly the at the index showed that for one unit increase or one degree increase of the ADSTABA index, the risk of instability increased by a factor 1.57. And if you put up a threshold of an LCE of 23 and an ADSTABA index of 11, then for cases with an ADSTABA index above 11 degrees, the risk of instability increases by the factor of 76 which now quite a high sensitivity and a specificity of above 90 and 95%. So from all the data we collected in, this, in, in these cohorts, only the ADSTABER index was shown to have some predictive value for those hips. Now the, pr the prevalence of a question sign is increased in unstable hips. The sensitivity and specificity is not that good. The combination with other radiographic parameters does not increase the predictive power of the crescent sign. And in our model, the actual index had the highest predictive value for predicting instability. Now, I think it's also a bit the problem of the crescent sign because it may be influenced by the volume of gadolinium if you apply into the joint. If you apply more, it could be more likely than you have more um, gadolinium between the joint surfaces. Then joint laxity may play a role. Missing uh, label seal just um, may just enable the hip to be pushed out a little bit by the liquid. Cartilage wear, so we have an OA, the head migrates into the cartilage defect, then you will have a, a positive question sign. And positioning of the legs during examination, um, if you tie the uh, strong legs together or if you pull on the leg, may also influence um, 
the presence of a crescent sign. So in summary, now the 5% crescent sign is significantly more prevalent in unstable hips. The axle crescent sign is the most reliable, but it still limited predictive value. And it's not a standalone factor, it's an additional factor that has to be taken into consideration when you analyze one of those complex hips. Thank you very much. I would also like to thank Corin Zulmühle, Valerie Kuhner, James McInnes and Dominic Pfluger for setting up and work, working through this study. Thank you very much. <laughs>